Hey guys, I'm Caleb Giddings. And I'm Keith Finch. Keith is finally back. He died of the Rona. He had no power because uh, he lives in Michigan. And it's just been been a, been a couple of fun weeks of me talking to myself like a crazy person. I mean, we do that anyway, whether or not I have utilities for the Rona. That's but yeah, surviving the Rona, great times. That's facts. All right. So, and we'd also like to start this week off by thanking our sponsors who now all of them, including guns.com appear in our sponsor banners. Thank you sponsors for being wonderful people. And moving on. Let's get right to it this week because Keith, uh, I read on the internet that they are taking all the steel case, not just steel case, but all of the Russian ammo is going away. It's disappearing tomorrow and you're never going to be able to get it again. Please rate all this as gone. cap or no cap. All gone. No more Russian ammo. Nothing. All on tomorrow. Actually, September 7th is when it uh, implements, but it's, it's definitely tomorrow. No, this has been the uh, interesting talk around the gun sphere is all the Russian ammo, which I, I don't shoot steel case ammo really anymore. I don't have a 545 or 76239 gun right now. Um, I'm trying to get one and I'm not particularly worried about feeding it ammo. And the reason being is if you actually look into what changed, this was not, People are framing it like this is a devastating attack on the 2A. It's deliberately flipping the bird to U.S. gun owners who own by 39 or Russian guns or anything like that. And this really doesn't have anything to do with that. This is a reprisal for Sergei Skiprol and his daughter. This is, this is because the Russians violated chemical and biological warfare law back from 1991. Mm -hmm. So the... the uh... Backstory on that is these there were already sanctions in place against Russia uh, for, you know, using biological warfare to murder people, which is super illegal. That's like turbo illegal. That's more illegal than giving Black Hawk helicopters to the Taliban. Um, Tiny story. <laughs> to, yeah, topical humor today, guys. Uh -huh. but, so these there were sanctions that were already in place. Uh, and the new sanctions that go into effect September 7th, not tomorrow, but September 7th are, if I've actually read the state department's document instead of mm -hmm. reading a forum, and it specifically applies to new import licenses. And so then I asked around about how import licenses work for ammo. And what you get is you basically get an open continuous import license for specific calibers or specific SKUs of ammo. So if you're a company like Tula, and I haven't talked to Tula, I've talked to industry people who have talked to Tula. Tula basically said, this doesn't actually affect us. We have an existing open import license for 9 mil, 4762. So we're going to be able to keep bringing that stuff in. Uh, so it's not like come September 7th, the pipeline to Tula is going to get shut down. No, and, and if you read into this further, the restriction specifically says uh, permanent imports of certain Russian firearms and new and pending permit applications, new and pending ones, mm -hmm. and importation of firearms and ammunition manufacturer located in Russia will be subject to a policy of denial. So all these new permits, the U.S. State Department, because of the CWP Act 1991 and their violation of it, assassinating people with poison and stabbing them with umbrellas and stuff and like KGB crazy cool spy warfare spy straight up KGB stuff. shit. Yeah. So that the Russians did that and this is the retaliation for that. So they're cutting off new imports and everything like that. But anyone with an existing license that that license is still there. Now if they get to an expiration point on that license within the next 12 months from September 7th 2021 to September 7th, 2022, they might not get the license renewal right away because this is a 12 month policy. This is wait, a, wait. this 12 did, month policy. Did on, you say that this policy has an expiration date on it? Yes. And that it's not an indefinite ban on it, steel case ammunition is, from Russia? It is in fact not an indefinite ban on steel case ammunition from Russia or you know, steel cased ammunition that happens to maybe have originated in Russia, but then went to another country, which got so, an import license. Let's talk about that for a second. Hypothetically, so there doesn't even need to be a hypothetical about it because it's actually legal. It's, you know, so the, uh, 
this isn't the first time that imports from Russia have been banned or restricted. And yet somehow things have ended up in the United States and people haven't been thrown in prison for it. And the reason for that is it's actually perfectly legal. So let's say I own an ammo plant in Russia and I am Russian and I have a casual adherence to things like import export regulations because I'm Russian and I own an ammo plant. It's perfectly, it's mostly legal for me to export my ammo to a friendly country like Tajikistan. I, that's my favorite of the stands because that's a real country guys. Yep. Um, <laughs> it's, it's perfectly legal for me to export, but let's say I, I export my ammo to Kazakhstan. And I have a shell company in Kazakhstan that isn't actually owned or operated by any of the Russian entities that own my ammo plant. But I have this, you know, shell company in uh, Kazakhstan that buys all of my ammo and ships it to Kazakhstan and then from Kazakhstan imports it to the United States. That's legal. Uh, it, I, it's this isn't like a this isn't a loophole or anything like that. It's just following the law because the permit is the import bans are targeting Russian companies, basically. They're not targeting unaffiliated companies. So if some, you know, law abiding Kazakhstanis just happen to come into possessions of 37,000 tons of steel case nine mil, they got to sell it somewhere. And so they can ask the U.S. State Department for it perfectly legal import license and say, hey, we've got all this ammunition we'd like to sell in the United States. And they look at them and go, ah, the Kazakhstanis have this ammunition they would like to sell. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Here is your import license. Here are the costs and fees involved with it. So ultimately this ammunition ban is going to be an ammunition slightly more expensive. Yeah, it's not- Which we're already experiencing. Yeah. So like same, 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 but different guys. Yeah, same, same, so, but different. Is it, import, an is it annoying? Sure. But yes. the import importation uh, licenses that are still in place aren't going away on September 7th. And the existing agreements, the existing imports aren't going away on September 7th. And new agreements and new movement, I guarantee you, is already in motion, already in place uh, to move ammunition into places where it can be imported into the United States. If this thing lasts for more than 12 months and enough of the current importation licenses expire, because I have no idea how many new import licenses were already granted and activated because of the ammo shortage here in the United States. But we've seen a lot of crazy ammo brands pop up mm -hmm. because of the ammo shortage due to the pandemic. Uh, there, those are all perfectly legitimate import licenses that are already active and already in place. Russia could very well take advantage of the fact that all these people already have import licenses in place and have new sales outlets. So we may see some additional markup because it's got to hop a couple of more spaces before it ends up in the United States. But Tula will not be gone tomorrow, guys. That's just... Yeah, the tool I mean, is not going away. It will be gone tomorrow because it'll be out of stock because all you dork wads keep panic buying everything. Like, can we please? I, I'm trying to buy a five four five, guys. Stop taking my ammo. Man, remember when they when five four five used to be cheap, like twenty two magnum? Oh cheap? Jesus! Like it was fourteen cents around someplace. You could get a ten eighty case of it for like hundred nineteen dollars, and you're like, what? So as of right now, to give you guys an update on how dumb everyone is, uh, are the homies at Lucky Gunner have no 762 by 39 or 762 by 54 uh, in stock. So I guess all of the pores have stocked up on steel case for their garbage rods. Um, <laughs> Man, I'm I'm glad I'm such a sophisticated AK buyer because mine's in 556. Five, right. Yours, if, well, and then you have your backwards gun that loads from the wrong end. Yeah, my, my backwards AK. <laughs> Hang on, wait. Let me see if they have ammo that I care about. Do they have any 32 Magno? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. So he, kind of the, the, the net net on this, guys, I want people to have a sense of uh, calm about this, or at the very least, a sense of, I, I'm, I'm just tired of people panicking about every little thing. You know, are there 
bad things that the Biden administration is doing domestically to try to push gun control. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, call your senators. Tell them not to confirm David Chipman. Then, yeah, yes, that. That's that. a really bad thing that could happen that the Biden administration is actively screwing with gun owners over. Yeah, things like that. Things like, you know, uh, the ATF doing ATF things, which uh, we're actually going to talk about that in another episode because there's this whole thing going on with rare brute triggers, which I think we want to address. But, you know, this is not this particular action is not a directly targeted anti-gun action, despite what you but despite how you may feel despite how it may look on paper does it suck yes is it going to make steel case ammo more expensive yes but it's not this, it's not this is what not, you th- yeah it's not what the internet is representing not, it's it. not stealing your 2a right away it's it's a it's an annoying it's a highly annoying consequence of us punishing russia for chemical biological weapon misuse yeah, uh, if Russia could stop doing KGB shit, that would be pretty cool. That would be like that would be think, think of that. They're not. I mean, they're not going to do it. Putin. No, do it. of course not. <laughs> um, speaking Putin of probably. things that are not, also, I, I just I saw this, and since we're kind of talking about people overreacting, I saw on the internet uh, a. Uh, the internet never lies. Yeah. Well, I called it an article, but I feel like that's an insult to articles. <laughs> I saw a crazy person write that. Uh, they, there was a new plan to take away our guns. And this one was this one was so crazy. It was great. So uh, you and I both know that every legislative session, some legislature legislators will introduce a bill for the sake of introducing that bill, basically to say, I'm doing the thing, even though that I go, did the thing. Look yeah. at me fighting for the thing that has no chance whatsoever. Right. Even though that they know that bill is going to die in committee. You know that bill is going to die in committee. Hell, sometimes they won't even make it to the committee. They'll just sort of bleh. So one of those bills that has been going for, that has been introduced pretty much every legislative session since the no-fly list became a thing is the no-fly list, no guns bill. So it's, you know, if you're on the federal no-fly list, which is uh, a secret list of people who can't get on airplanes, you can't buy a gun, right? That's what this bill aims to uh, put into place. And it's been shot down every single time because it would be hella illegal and it would get the government sued and everybody kind of knows that. So and but, the government is actually in the business of not being sued. They do yeah. not like having to take their policies to court. They don't. Yeah, because what would happen uh, is, I want to see who uh, who is this guy that introduces this. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah, Susan, uh, no, that's the senators, blah, 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 terrorist firearms. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, if this bill were to actually get passed, which it never will, the government would then have to reveal the no-fly list. And, and then they would have to reveal how they make the no-fly list. And right now they get really to kind of nebulously be like, oh, there's a no-fly list because it doesn't really have a ton of teeth. It's just right. kind of having communicating with the TSA. Yeah, and they don't want the no-fly list to become public for a number of reasons, because one, they don't want you also to know who isn't on it in addition to who is on it. And there are very valid reasons for that too. There, you know, The last time this bill had any kind of traction, uh, it was pointed out that having somebody get denied a gun because they're on the no-fly list could also tip them off that law enforcement is watching them. Mm -hmm. If an otherwise law-abiding citizen goes in to buy a gun and they say, sorry, you can't, and the guy knows he doesn't have any domestics, he knows he doesn't have any felonies, it kind of leads you to a product of a process of elimination of, oh, well, it must be because I'm on the no-fly list. Well, why am I on the no-fly list? Oh, it's because the FBI is watching me? Weird. So these bills never go anywhere. Uh, In... Then, just recently, an, another crazy person, I mean, elected representative, introduced a bill that was that is the no vaccine, now you're on the no fly list, which that bill won't go anywhere either. That shit will die in committee. Uh, but the third crazy person saw that these bills exist and are floating around Congress and came to the conclusion that this was their secret plan to take your guns which as secret plans go, it sucks because I can read the text of the bills on the internet. Uh-huh. 
they're they're there. They're public. That's that's how they get the kudos for making the bills go. You know, the 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 process of bill making. If you have not uh, seen the Schoolhouse Rock variant, so love it, love it. I'm just a bill sitting on Capitol Hill. Well, most bills get introduced just to say, like, hey, I did my job. I did the mm. thing. And these bills exist in that realm too. Sure, they might actually kind of believe in the bill, but for the most part, it's a I'm doing my part. Yeah, I'm it's doing my part too. And so this is what that bill is. Uh, so the introduction of the no fly list COVID bill, you know, you don't get the vaccine, you don't get the poke, you don't get on the plane. And now you don't get on a plane, you don't get guns. But, like, I get it. I get, I get the crazy logic. I get it, but it's it's never going to work because those would be huge, massive, ultimately <laughs> destructive like, I wonder, violations. <laughs> I wonder how fast a federal judge would issue a stay on those on that on the those. Just like, oh no, hang on, nope, nope, no, no, no. no judge no, no, just no. being like, yeah, that's all the nope right there. We're going to stop that right now because I don't want to arbitrate this in court when someone wins this lawsuit. <laughs> right? Oh my god. So the point that uh, that. I'm trying to get at here with this guys is don't get, and we, God, we've been saying this like since our first episode, don't give into the crazy. Don't give in to the panic, to the, the, for lack of a better way of explaining it, because there are the biggest reasons not to get it, to get into it is because it distracts from real issues. If you're worrying about, having your second amendment rights taken away because you didn't get the vaccine. You're worrying about something that's literally never going to happen. Uh, and what you should be worrying about is David Chipman. What you should be worrying about is the uh, pistol brace uh, definition being changed. The, uh, you know, receiver, right, receiver, the, definition the receiver, receiver nomenclature. These are the things you actually need to be worrying about and need to be focusing your energy on not worrying that the secret squirrel Illuminati lizard people, to force you to take a vaccine and then take away your guns or not get your guns and take a vaccine. I don't understand it. I, anyway, there are it, real it's, things. It's certainly a thing that was on the internet and they, it was pointed out is like, this is an active conspiracy to take your guns away because be. of these third order of effects, strangeness, that's going on so it clearly must be a plan i'm like, i do i don't know if you guys have been watching the federal government make plans recently They're not You're very so good bad at it, at it. so bad not yeah. good at it which <laughs> as to, to put a tidy little bow on this episode you should be more worried about the ammo import ban than you should be about not getting vaccinated and having your guns taken away because as we've said, the ammo import ban is a real thing. If a new company is trying to import, they won't be able to. If an import license gets yanked for some reason, they're not going to be able to reapply and get it, right? So it is a real thing. It's going to make ammo more expensive, especially steel case ammo for your garbage rods. But you should be more worried about that than crazy conspiracy theories. So once again, we find ourselves here on Gun Day Brunch as the voices of internet reason. And when I'm the so reasonable sorry. one, the world's a fucking scary place. It really is. But we're here for it. We are here for it. All right, guys, that is it for this week. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching, listening, downloading, subscribing, sharing, liking, and doing all of those lovely internet actions. We will be back next week. We will be back. We will be back next week with another episode of Gun Day Brunch. Thanks, everyone. Later.